Hello everyone. Welcome to the Daily Current Affairs by Neo IAS. So today on 8th April 2019, our topics are Space Physics Laboratory, Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana, World Health Day, Modified Credit Ratio, then Map Aided Program and Prelims Question Revision Series. So our first topic that is Space Physics Laboratory. So the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, they are going to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Space Physics Laboratory. Okay, so actually the first formed it was the Space Physics Division, that is SPD, under the Indian Space Program in 1968. And later on, this SPD, it evolved into Space Physics Laboratory, that is in 1984. So, this Space Physics Laboratory, it was formed in 1984. And uh, this Space Physics Laboratory, it has been a critical critical player in all major ISRO endeavors, including its two main missions that is Chandrayaan 1st and Mars Orbiter mission. So about this SPL, it is the premier science laboratory of BSSC and the main function is that it carries out basic and applied research on the lower and upper atmosphere such as ionosphere, then magnetosphere and even on other solar system or celestial bodies. And uh, they use as a suit of state of the art and many experiments and then ground based then on about ships, on aircrafts or uh, we can say even on balloons etc. And another important thing is that they offer students and scientists an excellent opportunity for performing the research. Okay, so the main contribution of this SPL include in Chandrayaan mission and also in Mars mission. So in Chandrayaan mission, they helped to create an uh, instrument called SARA that is this instrument, it is first of its kind and it is used to study the moon through energetic neutron atom imaging technique. Okay, and another contribution is CHASE, that is Chandra's Altitudinal Composition Explorer for the Moon Impact Probe. So, these are the two instruments which help in the Chandrayaan mission. And uh, in the case of Mars mission, they create an instrument called MENCA. Actually, this MENCA stands for Mars Exospheric Neutron Composition Analyzer. And mainly it is used for studying the composition and distribution of the Martian exosphere. So, these are some of the contributions made by the SPL. Okay. And we know that about BSSC, it is the lead center of ISRO. And, and the Vikram Sarafai Space Center, it is located in Tiruvanthapuram in state of Kerala. And uh, this center, it pursues active research and development mainly in the fields of uh, what space physics, then we can say even in chemicals or in uh, propulsions, then in aeronautics, etc. So, it is the main lead center for ISRO and is responsible for the design and development of launch vehicle technology. And some of the major program at BSSA include PSLV, GSLV that is Geosynchronized Satellite Launch Vehicle, then we know about Rohini sounding uh, rockets, then recently GSLV MK3 that is the uh, development of Geosynchronized Satellite Launch Vehicle and also reusable launch vehicles then critical technologies towards human space flight. These are some of the major programs at BSSC. Okay. Then coming to our second topic that is Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana. And it has been found that more than 85 percentage of this Ujjwala beneficiaries in uh, mainly in four states, they are still using earthen cookwares. So actually this Ujjwala Yojana uh, under this uh, LPG connections were given to women uh, who are belong to the BPL, BPL and uh, mainly in rural areas. 
but now it is found that more than 85 percentage of its beneficiaries they are still using earthen cookwares. So, some of its reasons it can be we know that this Ujwala beneficiaries they are very poor people. So, actually it, uh, it is very difficult for them to uh, own an LPG of their own. It can be one of the reason and another challenge facing by them uh, may be the refilling of this cylinder. So, after the use uh, the easy refilling of this gas cylinder it is a main challenge to this people. So, it can be a uh, another challenge. And another uh, thing is that the gender inequalities. So, uh, in the in a rural uh, family majority of the decision uh, would be taken by a men and it become very difficult for the women to take a decision and uh, that is a hindering a shift to LPG use. That is hindering a shift from the earth and cookwares to an LPG usage that decision uh, is very difficult to take by the women. It can be one of the reason. Okay. So, about Prathana Mantri Ujwala Yojana, we know that it is a scheme by the uh, government to give free LPG connection for the women belonging to the BPL households across the country. And it was launched in 1st May 2016 and under which deposit free LPG connections are released within the cash assistance by government of India. And 48 percentage of its beneficiaries are is the ST people and it also provides interest free loan to purchase tow and refill by the oil marketing companies. And this scheme it is implemented by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas and it is the first uh, scheme which is in, uh, implemented by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas and they have also revised its target that is earlier its target was 5 crore now it was revised to 8 crore ok and its main important objective is to protect the health of the women and to empower them. So, uh, we know that the usage of this uh, earthen cookwares they cause a lot of health hazards among the women. So, its main objective is to curb the health issues that result from using fossil fuels and, uh, and also to reduce the casualties that occur as a result of unclean fuels which are used for cooking. And it also helps to control respiratory risks to a great extent and also prevent uh, preventing indoor pollution then uh, we can say the usage of fossil fuels etc. These are some of its main objectives ok. Then our third topic that is World Health Day. So, uh, the WHO uh, it is uh, celebrating the 70th anniversary of World Health Day ok that is the news piece and we know that the World Health Day it is usually celebrated every year on 7th April. So, so this World Health Day is an initiative of the World Health Organization to make people more aware of certain health issues and thus uh, the World Health Assembly it took place for the first time in Geneva and this World Health Day it is commemorated every year on this date because it was uh, founded on that day when WHO was founded ok. So, uh, and its main uh, purpose is, is to address all vital healthcare issues. So, as I said its main objective is to spread awareness about the uh, health issues and also uh, to spread awareness about equal healthcare facilities to all people ok. And the theme of 2019, so every year it has got a theme and the 2019 theme is universal coverage. That is universal coverage everyone everywhere. That is the theme for 2019. And let us discuss what is this universal health coverage. So, uh, in this universal health coverage all people uh, across the globe or we can say they get good medical condition without any kind of discrimination. 
so they can access good quality health services whenever and wherever required okay without facing any financial difficulties also so the three key goals of this who's universal coverage plan includes ensuring everyone uh, who needs healthcare services they they are getting this healthcare benefit irrespective of their financial status so first thing is to ensure that everybody is getting this financial assistance then second thing the quality of the healthcare services should be good enough so that we can prevent certain diseases and improve the health to a certain extent and the third goal it is, is it is that people who seek the healthcare service they should be protected from the financial risk these are the three goals of who's universal coverage plan and this universal health coverage it is based on the 1948 who constitution and the health for all agenda of the 1978 almata declaration and uh, the 1948 who constitution it was declared that the health is a fundamental human right okay so this universal health coverage it is based on this 1948 who constitution and the health for all agenda of the 1978 almata declaration clear so next topic that is modified credit ratio so why it came in use because the credit qualities of entities uh, they are rated by care the care stands for uh, credit analysis and research limited and they have seen that the modernization uh, or sorry the moderation in 2018 19 with the mcr of financial year 19 which was recorded at 0.95 against 1.02 in financial year 18 so this care uh, it has recorded that the mcr of financial year 19 recorded at 0.95 against 1.08 in financial year 18 so this mci stands for modified credit ratio and actually it helps to measure the mobility in its ratings and it is given by this care and this care uh, what is it actually it is it is the ratio of upgrades and reaffirmations to downgrades and reaffirmation so how actually we are calculating is in the, is that an increase in the mcr it denotes an increase in the upgrades and a decrease in the mcr it, it denotes a decrease in its upgrades okay so in other words we can say that an increase in mcr it implies an improving credit quality of the entities so uh, as a whole we can comprise it like an mcr which is closer to 1 it indicates higher stability in ratings with larger proportion of reaffirmations okay and some of the causes of uh, rating downgrades are delays in debt servicing liquidity constraints weakened credit profile decline in scale of operation and profit margins then deterioration in capital structure and debt coverage indicators and some of the causes of rating upgrades are improvement in scale operations then growth in sales rise in profit margins comfortable capital structure and improved debt coverage indicators etc okay then about this care It was formed in the year 1993, and its headquarters is in Mumbai. And it is India's third credit rating agency, and it was uh, mainly promoted by IDBI along with Canara Bank, UTA, and other financial and lending institutions. And MAP is a program we will be dealing with, Miyako Strait. So this Miyako Strait is a waterway which lies in between Miyako Island and Okinawa Island. and it is the widest strait in raiku islands and also it is known as kerama gap so here you can see the miyako strait which is lies between the miyako island and the okinawa island geopolitical significance of this miyako strait is that it is one of the few international waterways for china's people liberation army navy to access this pacific ocean from the east china sea that is the geopolitical significance of this miyako strait and in prelims question revision series our question is in india 
deficit financing is used for raising resources for a economic development, b redemption of public debt, c adjusting the balance of payments and d reducing the foreign debt. So, this def uh, deficit financing it is the, it's actually the difference between the expenditure and receipts. So, in the case of public finance, it means the government is spending more than what it is actually earning. Okay. So, uh, as a whole, we can say that it is a pragmatic tool for economic development and it has been used by, by the Indian government to obtain necessary resource to finance the five-year plans. And it is a necessary evil in a welfare state as the state often fail to generate a tax revenue and this uh, if it is going to if it is generating this tax revenue it will be sufficient uh, enough to take care of the expenditure of that state okay that's all regarding this deficit financing and coming back to question in india the deficit financing is used for raising resources for definitely our answer will be a economic development Okay, uh, it's a very direct question. So, our answer is A, that is economic development. So, that's all for today's session. You can download the material from the link given below and thank you for listening.